All right, welcome back to KP Ready Unpacked. This is my opportunity to, on a weekly basis, ask KP Ready, the CEO and founder of both Shadow Ventures and Shadow Partners, what he was thinking when he posted that on LinkedIn. If you're not following KP Ready, KP Ready, R-E-D-D-Y on LinkedIn, my first question is why not? Uh, my second question is how quickly can you get to LinkedIn and start following him now? Because every day, you know, once, twice, maybe three times a day, you thought I was going to go into a song lyric there, I know. But um, every day, KP posts really insightful things on LinkedIn. And um, th this is this is fun for me to jump into this recording session and say, hey, KP, what inspired you to post that on LinkedIn? So KP, ready? Uh, needs no introduction. Like I said, he's our CEO and founder. My name is Jeff Eccles, Senior Advisor, Head of Marketing at Shadow Partners. And um, I just get to uh, go along on this ride and, and ask the questions. So KP, welcome back. Glad you're here. Hey, hey Jeff. How's it going? <laughs> it's going well. Um, so as, as we get ready, as we're recording this now, um, the the our newsletter went out on Tuesday of this week. So that mm -hmm. would have been uh, April 2nd, it went out. And the version of the newsletter that comes from you actually included this post that we're about to unpack. So some some may have already seen a post about or, or seen an article about this in the newsletter. But um, I think this is a really great one to unpack because you get you get into some of the conversations that you have mm -hmm. with people and in, in, in Sure, some reflection and, and a lot of good perspective here. So, um, if you're if you're trying to find this on LinkedIn, KP posted this on I'd say about March 30th. As I look at the screen, it seems mm -hmm. like that would be the right math. So, um, let me let me give it a read here real quickly. Then we'll come back and we will uh, we'll take some of these points and unpack them. There are ten points in this uh, in this uh, post on LinkedIn. So KP says, I'm so fortunate to have a job where I get to talk to so many people every day. Here's an observation. One, the highest earning years are when you are 50 plus. Two, most people 50 plus earn well, but they don't leverage themselves well to maximize their earnings. Three, there's too much of doing what I've always done, but getting paid more to do it. Four. The key to maximizing is reinvention. Five, applying the years of experience to pattern recognized new applications with better yield and scale are crucial. Six, you are no longer a manager. You are a coach and a mentor. Seven, constant curiosity is key. Eight, learning about new markets and ideas on a daily basis are important. Nine, ideation is more important than ever, not just for the quote unquote young. So not just for KP and I. <laughs> and then finally, uh, point number 10, build new tactical skills as well. It's never too late to learn practical and tactical capabilities. So as I read that, I think that's 10 great points. Um, do you want to start at the top or do you want to jump in yeah. on, on one of those in particular? So um, for those of you that haven't figured out, I'm of Indian origin, right? So um, in, in Hinduism, they believe that you have like a hundred year lifespan and they break that into quarters. So okay. zero to 25, you're a student. 25 to 50, you're a builder slash earner, like building your family, earning for your family. Um, kind of that stability and 50 to 75, you're a teacher, you're a mentor, you're a coach, 75 to hundred, you leave your family behind and go live on a mountain and find enlightenment. Um, which means when I'm 75, I've told my wife, I'm moving to Aspen to live on a mountain. Cause that's, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what they meant. <laughs> yeah, for, I am certain that's what they meant. I am pretty sure what they meant. Um, you know, a hundred thousand mm -hmm. years ago or whatever. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Aspen's um, the place. Yeah. Aspen's the place. Uh, so, um, so anyway, so I've had this conversation with a lot of 
friends and executives that are, I think, a little bit freaked out about all this AI stuff, a little freaked out about just everything. But there's this complacency that happens in your 50s and 60s and so forth. And that is, you get good at your job. You've kind of seen everything. Like a lot of people ask me, like, you know, that I'm not flappable at all. Like nothing bothers me. And I'm like, no, kind of have seen just about everything. You know, it's it's a rare occasion. In fact, it's a delight when I see something that I've never seen before. (laughs) You know, but you just see, so, especially in business, you see so much. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that is a lot of people throw the opportunity away. This Mm -hmm. is a great time to really leverage that you're good at stuff and keep and, and that that that's like a 10 hour work week right it's not it's it's not a big thing and then really shift there from really focusing on new learnings new opportunities and new ideas you know whether it is you know i've got my third book coming out whether it's writing not not that i i wouldn't say i make a ton of money writing you know, I, I get little checks here and there it's not not paying a lot of bills Um, But it does open the door for a lot of other stuff like speaking and consulting and and those type of things. Uh, And and even to a certain degree, you know, my investing activities and how I get my investors, um, a lot of it comes through those things, right? But I think a lot of people like, well, you know, I finally made it to CEO and they're just kind of chilling. They already know the business. I was talking to someone today that, you know, a CEO of an engineering firm has never worked anywhere else, like straight out of college mm-hmm. for the last 40 years and is now like CEO. I mean, that person can should be able to do their day job in their sleep. So then the question is like, what are you doing with the rest of the time? How are you really trying to build? And I, th- I think there's a lot of opportunities to invest in startups, mentor people, um, and do things that have a lot more scale. You know, the ultimate product that scales is capital. Hmm. Time does not scale. Um, robots scale some, software scales some, but the thing that scales the most is capital because it, the effort of writing a million dollar check or a $10 million check, the effort is the same. In fact, some hmm. would argue that the due diligence of doing so is the same. Um, so I think there's opportunities for executives to, instead of spending money in, on their midlife crisis, Porsche or whatever, um, to actually be better angel investors, get involved in, you know, and, um, whether it's in your region, like you want to be impactful in your neighborhood, fine. If you want to be impactful in your industry, fine. And I think it's that constant learning and growing there really is a force multiplier of how you can earn at this, at this stage in your life. Yeah, those, those are really great points. And I, you know, they resonate. I see that around me. I've seen that throughout the industry and the, I think that that kind of touches on point number three as, as well as the, the first two points, but you say there's too much of doing what I've always done, but getting paid more to do it. Um, <clears throat> You know, I, I think you get to that point. It's like, okay, great, but why? Right. What, what's the point of this? Yeah. I also think you discount, like if you're in your 20s, 30s, call it. Uh, I have a young child, but that's a little bit rare. Um, but, you know, when you have, and I have two older ones, but when I was in my 30s, like, you know, dropping them off at school and carpool and soccer practice and a this thing and a that thing. It is really hard to find space at that age. And, you know, you just don't, it's it's just really, really hard. Um, But, you know, when you're 50s, kids are probably, you know, in most cases, I've moved, you know, they're, they're self, they're, they're dressing themselves, they're feeding themselves, they're driving themselves. And it's amazing how much you can read, how much like just content you can take in Mm -hmm. if you choose to. Um, I think learning languages, learning, music, learn, like all the things that you just never have had time for, I think is just so critical. And, and I think all those things um, are, are, are attainable, but I kind of feel like people squander the time away. 
Yeah. And I think that gets to it's, it's number it's point number four and probably point number seven as well. In number four, you talk about the key. Well, I'll skip to seven. You talk about constant curiosity being the key, right? So this, the consuming of content, um, because there's a lot of great content out there, like you said, but then if we come back to point four, the key to maximizing is reinvention. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is the way we've always done it, I think is probably the most dangerous saying in our society right now. Um, so this, this idea of reinvention to me is, is really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I was having coffee with a friend and she was asking me about like how my older kids are so well adjusted. Mm. And I was like, I think I inherently wasn't intentional. They learned a lot about resiliency in, in their lifetime. Dad has had 12 different business cards. Mm. Dad has taken a company public. He's played on the fringes of bankruptcy. They've seen what failure looks like. And they've seen me just keep swinging, just keep moving. Yep. That was a loss. Keep going. They've seen me make money on some deal. They see me make money on deals where I, I wasn't even sure what they were going to survive. And then they see me lost, lose a lot of money on it. What was like a sure thing mm-hmm. and just keep moving. And I think they've seen that happen, but I think a lot of people, you know, the idea that you like went to a company when you graduated college and you're still there, like, that's fine. But what are you doing outside of that construct? What are you, mm-hmm. there's a podcast I love listening to. It's called Acqu- the acquired podcast. It is four hours long. These guys don't mess around, right? Mm-hmm. They publish once a month, but it's the it's like the history lesson of, of great companies. And it's Hermes and Louis Vuitton and Porsche and all these companies. There is nothing in my day job or in my personal life that would require me to listen to a four-hour podcast about Hermes or Louis Vuitton, right? Maybe uh, marginally Porsche, Definitely Costco. They love me there. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> but, you know, but I listen to these things. I'm listening. I'm listening to this thing about Louis Vuitton and, you know, and, and um, Hermes and all this stuff. And it's like, because I'm just, I got to understand it. There's nothing I do that has remotely any connection to those businesses. But I'm just interested. I want to know how stuff works. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it all works because it's fascinating to me that people will spend $15,000 on a handbag. I don't right. understand it, right? I don't, I don't get it. And, and obsessively spend money. And it's like, why is that? Why are people so, you know? And so I think, um, and, and you hear me on a daily basis, like, hey, did you see this book? Hey, did you see this podcast? Like, I'm, I'm constant, right, on it. Um, and I can't help it. But I do think it, it, at this age, you are in a position to listen and learn from those things mm-hmm. and apply them to the stuff you want to go to. I'm not going to start a fashion brand, although I might start an Etsy shop selling t-shirts of non fans. Um, <laughs> it's, it'll be that'll, be your biggest, that'll be your biggest idea yet. Yeah, all the bands I claim to have seen on the side stage at Lollapalooza. <laughs> there you go. Um, but beyond that, like, I don't, you know, but what it does is it brings a different level of thinking. It brings, you know, I think if, if, you know, our brain isn't a muscle, but let's say it was a muscle, we're not using all those little brain cells. Mm. We're not exercising. And, and I think so exposing yourself to different things and, you know, I have friends in the music industry, I'm just fascinated by it all, right? Like, why mm-hmm. do you do this, right? I learned the other day that um, there's a click track when they're producing music. I didn't know this, it's a click track. It's like a metronome. I was like, no, I thought that's the drummer's job. And like, well, it is the drummer's job, but the drummer's not always on pace, maybe in a studio environment, but definitely not on stage. Right. And so there's a click track going, it's like click, 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 whatever the beat is. I found it fascinating. I was like, oh my God, I always thought it was, Travis Barker up there keeping the rhythm or Lars Ulrich. It turns out they can stop drumming. (laughs) Everybody already has their click going, right? And so I think it's like, 
I was like, wow, that's super interesting. That it turns out we always thought that the drummer kept the beat, kept the rhythm. That is no longer the case. <laughs> and so how does that apply to how you think about business and marketing? And I just think, I just think it starts to open up your thinking. Um, and then you, it, those ideations really help you scale how you, how you want to make money and how you want to do things. Yeah, and you know you have points number um, eight and nine, I guess it is, where you, you talk about learning about new markets and ideas on a daily basis, which is is what you're talking about there. And then ideation is more important than ever. And you know, again, it's we're we're coming fresh out of out of our uh, um, the Q1 cohort or incubator, and so we've. For weeks now, eight eight weeks or so, we've been you know immersed in working with these startups that are going through customer discovery, but they're they're ideating, right? They're learning, they're ideating, they're learning, and and you know it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And uh, I think I know I've said this on here before. It's one of the things I say to to all of them, and even you know my class, my graduate students that I run very similar to our incubator. Like if you get to the end. And your idea is the same at the end as it was when you came in or when you applied to be in this incubator, there's a problem, right? And I think the same is true, right? If I'm, if, if I'm in the same spot, if I have the the same mindset, if I, you know, all these things, the same at, at mm -hmm. 50 or beyond mm -hmm. that I did when I was 30, I think there's a problem. No, a hundred percent, you know, and there's all this narrative around growth mindset, fixed mindset. I mm -hmm. think when you're younger, you don't have a choice. You're just like, you know, you, you have to learn and grow or you'll yeah. drown. Like, that's just how mm -hmm. it is. And then I think once you've learned to swim, then it's like, oh, I'm good. And a lot of people get stuck in that fixed mindset mm -hmm. and are thinking about stuff. So, you know, yeah. there's been a lot around, you know, fixed mindset type stuff. And I, but, I, but I think it's just like the weeks turn into days, turn into months, turn into quarters, turn into years, turn into decades. And it's like... Where, you know, what have I done? You know, what have I really done? And I think, um, you know, I definitely have this bias towards business things. Um, but I think it's just, you have to be a constant learner. And I, I just think in, in your 50s, it's, it's easy just to say, wow, I have all this time. The kids are off. I've got so much time. Um, yeah. And it's like, instead of doing that, you're playing golf five days a week. Yeah, yeah. A friend of mine and I were talking about that this morning, actually, that, you know, you get, you get to your fifties or somewhere mm -hmm. and you look back, you reflect back. And for many of us, it's so easy to go, okay, well, sure. Growth mindset through your, through your university and whatever, and into your twenties, et cetera. But then, then you start a family just, just like you were describing the quarters earlier and it, I think it's very easy and probably natural to pour things into the kids, the kids' <clears throat> activities, the family, et cetera, and lose track of that personal growth. Mm -hmm. And I, I think many of us wake up at some point, you know, after, after 30 years or, or something and go, oh, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't grow that much, right? In these terms that we're mm -hmm. using right now, the, the way that we're looking at, it, I didn't grow that much over the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's, is it an epidemic in our society? I don't know if it's, you know, if we elevate it to that point or not, maybe you do, but I think that's definite, uh, yeah. definite truth. You know, you know, what's interesting though, I got a couple of text messages and I had a conversation with someone that is sub 40. And I was surprised at their reaction. They said, oh, my God, that was such a great post. I really thought, like, in my at my age, I'm not doing enough, and therefore um, I'm not going to get anywhere. with." Like, I didn't realize that there's mm -hmm. another phase of growth because mm -hmm. carpool, blah, blah, all the things, right? Kids, kids suck the life out of you, right? It's just like there is no space. And I think for him, he said like, oh my God, it was just really inspiring to know that like, I have time. I have this phase of life that I get to look forward to um, versus feeling like every day of my life in my thirties, I'm behind. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so behind. I'm so behind. Um, that there isn't really a future left, you know? But yeah. And I think that's one of the luxuries, you know, as, as you're describing, I think it's one of the luxuries that, that you can eventually get to, right? The kids don't need me to drive them here. The kids don't need me to help them get dressed or fix their breakfast or their dinner. Or, mm -hmm. You know, maybe they're not even in the house anymore, that, that type of thing. So all of a sudden we do have time, resources, et cetera. And, um, you know, when you were 30, you may not have had that or 35, mm -hmm. something like that. And so, you know, doing what you're saying in this post and leveraging those things, leveraging the time and resources that we have, uh, really opens up that potential that you're talking about here. If you go down and you do these things, the, the, the final point, the point number 10 was build new tactical skills as well. It's never too late to learn practical and tactical capabilities. And you started this mm -hmm. referencing AI, right? Yeah. And we've got a huge focus on AI, whether yeah. it's the incubator, whether it's the webinar that you've got coming up that we'll, we'll talk about here. Um, the, your new book that's coming out, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, innovation discovery workshops that we have. Um, <coughs> there are a lot of people, uh, in our ecosystem and beyond that are either afraid of some of the technologies, speaking of AI, uh, or are reticent to, to think that they have to learn something or just feel incapable or inadequate of being able to learn this, this newfangled technology. Yeah. Um, but you know, there, we've got to, right. We've, yeah. it, it's never too late to learn practical and tactical capabilities. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, because I'm I constant. I'm a constant. Like, how do I scale myself? How do I scale myself? <clears throat> Not that I'm trying to quit working. It's just like that's just my nature, right? Mm -hmm. So I do this. I, I, I built this like startup scorecarding methodology that we use at Shadow Ventures, mm -hmm. and I've developed it. And you know, I would say it's like call it half to sixty percent of the process, right? It's not all of it, but it, it's a big part of like how do you standardize these things. And so, you know, it's kind of in a spreadsheet and I was like, okay, let me create a product out of this. So I did some research and I found a couple of products that can help me do this. And I spent an entire Saturday developing an assessment engine for how to score a startup. I didn't delegate. I sat here, spent, I mean, literally from like, nine o'clock in the morning till six o'clock at night till my, my wife and the baby were gone and i like it was, it was great i was just sitting here there were like a lot of empty cans around lots of snacks around it felt like back in the day right it felt like back in the day when i was writing code and this was not writing code it was logical systems but not code and i could see a lot of people my age saying oh that's really cool let me see if i can get someone to do it mm -hmm. And I was like, no, no, I like, I want to do this. I need to know how to do it. Well, now I have one of our analysts, right? Um, I've got him working on it and it's like, but I've already done it. So at least I can be helpful and, you know, help, you know, I know what he's doing. I haven't just like totally delegated. It. And some people would say I'm insane for spending an entire Saturday working on something like that. Yeah. I, I mean, I, <laughs> Insane for doing that? I don't know. I mean, you, you identified the tool; it's needed. You you can now, um, even even with the analysts sort of running with it from now, you still have you still understand the critical path, mm -hmm. and and have the critical thinking and and the, um, you know the the institutional knowledge. Mm -hmm to continue to build that and improve that and, and push, push the limits and the boundaries of, of what the, the analyst is creating now. And think about it. Now I have a tool that I can share with other people. If they think that I, the way I look at startups and my investment style and whatever else, right. Um, that they believe in it and they want to, Hey, I want to learn how you do it. Great. Mm -hmm. There's a link. Yeah. Here's a link, like use my system, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that is like amazing scale. You know, you can only write yeah. books and 
I can only post on LinkedIn so much for and do podcasts and all that other stuff. But the idea of building tooling around the way I do things, I mean, and I, you know, there's no guarantee. It's just how I do things. <laughs> Right. But it's probably better than having nothing. Right. Right. Better than having nothing. And it also, and this is where a lot of the fear that we hear about, a lot of the fear that's demonstrated comes in. It also doesn't replace you. Mm -mm. It's, it's, it's simply a tool that can be utilized. And I, you know, when I'm talking with AEC audiences or AEC clients, you know, whatever the, whatever the gig is, so to speak, it's, you know, you think about, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in this house now that's uh, 80, is pushing 90 years old at this point. So my neighborhood is a new house, but <laughs> relative to a lot of places, mm -hmm. it's an old house. And the, the, whoever built this, right, they had a hammer. They had an apron full of nails and they were banging things together. Mm -hmm. Right. And at some point, depending on where they were during their career, when they built this house, maybe they started to use different tools, more advanced tools. Um, you know, their, their, their son, their granddaughter, whoever it was that came behind them generationally in their business started using pneumatic nailers, mm -hmm. right? They, they started using different tools that brought more efficiencies. But the way that this house is framed is the same way that the house, you know, 15 miles from here that's going to be built next week is it's very similar um, in the way that it's framed. And so, um, you know, the, the, the tools are tools and they're not, they don't necessarily replace a really good framer, a really good carpenter, uh, the knowledge that they have and their, their ability to, to iterate and their ability to to come up with different business models for their their business to to keep pushing forward and say okay how do I use these tools better? I will have to say that I'm very fixated on uh, apron full of nails. That's a great band name. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, yes. we'll put it in. After, yes, after sheet. you said all those things, that was my takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> that that was probably the best takeaway they could have come from that actually <laughs> Jeff went on talking for about five minutes and you know the next day they had a new band called Apron Full of Nails <laughs> Jeff's trying to drop some knowledge and I'm fixated on that's a great band name <laughs> it's, it's, it's the best knowledge bomb of the day Apron Full of Nails <laughs> I don't know why startups so, don't name themselves better things they come exactly. up with these wild like esoteric names that don't mean anything well it's like <laughs> if you had like a robotic nailing gun you'd be call yourself like apron full of nails that's my that's exactly. my company name <laughs> so for those of you that that don't know um our summit is coming up again in october of this year october 30th at atlanta tech village by the way um, we do have uh out there right now a, a, a pre-registration link, but one of the things that's gonna happen, we're gonna hand out swag um, this year at Summit and it's gonna be, it's gonna be band t-shirts and apron full of nails is gonna be one of those <laughs> t-shirts. I mean, he wants to walk around with a t-shirt with my name on it or like, like we'll just yeah. give away like apron. fake band t-shirts. Well, yeah. the other thing is well, we, need to like, we should also be like, yeah, man, they're great. I mean, you've never heard exactly. of them? I oh, mean, they're amazing. Yeah, check them out on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, check them out on Spotify. You have to have the premium version, though. <laughs> Spotify to find them. It can be them. tough to find. It can't be. Yeah. So, you know, I mentioned a minute ago, well, well, first of all, Summit is coming, right? Summit's coming October 30th. We we are doing pre-registration right now. Um, go to the Catalyst Network, which is the new name for what used to be called the uh, Shadow Partners online community, so Catalyst Network, and uh, right at the top of the home home feed, there you'll find the uh, the link to pre register for Summit. Um, on April sixteenth, which is where we're recording this, is uh, about two weeks away. You're going to put on a webinar mm -hmm. that um, is is kind of touches on what your new book is about. So do you want to talk for just a second about the webinar? That, that uh, Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of 
you know, a lot of focus around AI is, oh, it's going to take our job. It's going to do all this stuff. And um, I've had so many conversations through my speaking and people say, like, and I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. We've always, we've always managed, right? The invention of the combine and the invention of the engine and electricity, like we've, we've figured it out, right? And if I found that that just was not good enough for people to tell me, for me to say, like, we're going to be fine. AI is not going to take our jobs, right? Um, and so part of the book, I'm really focused on of case studies, historical case studies of where there was a shift in technology and it worked out for the better. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I've really done is said, okay, I, I looked at all these things and I said, well, what were the commonalities for them to make these transitions? And then from there, I came up with a set of skills back to it's never too late to learn new things a set of skills and traits that are important to not just survive in an AI world, but thrive in an AI driven world. And Good. so a lot of it's going to be kind of talking about those things. So the name of the webinar is called this changes everything thrive in an AI super cycle. Again, uh, go to the catalyst network or